What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, this is going to be a pretty fun unboxing. Also, kind of a lesson on why it's good to have some money just stashed away so you can make some purchases right when that opportunity comes up, because I have a perfect example of that one. So we've got this book here that is that, uh, that example. Then we've got two awesome books here that I picked up from an Instagram seller. And then one of the big reasons I wanted to do this video is I've had this box sitting around for a while, this pretty huge box. There are, remember how many books are in here? Five books that are in here. There's a bunch of cool books in here, but there's one that's actually conserved books. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit as well. So yeah, some awesome books in here and some more awesome books in this other one. So let's check these out. So before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So like you saw, I've got three boxes here, total I think eight books. Uh, so a bunch of cool stuff. And the first one right here is the one that I was talking about where it's good to have you know just some money set aside ready uh, if you get a really good deal that pops up. Because what actually happened, I have never had this happen before in all the time that I have bid on Heritage. This is a book I picked up on Heritage. So what happened was I got an email from somebody in the heritage sales department and basically somebody had won a book in one of the auctions and they didn't pay or they backed out or whatever. And so apparently I was the underbidder. And so they reached out to me and they said, Hey, you know, if you want this book, you can have it for your bid price. And I think usually what they do is they probably just relist it, but maybe they were in kind of a hurry just to get it done with because when I saw the book and I and I saw the price, I was like, I started looking back through my history because, you know, if you watch this channel, I track everything for all the books that I watch in those heritage auctions. And this one had sold like two months prior. <laughs> and so I was just, I was just like, okay, you know, like at, at first my thought was it was a scam because it, there was like a link in it where uh, you had to click this link to go pay for it. And I was like, man, this feels like a scam to me. So I went a different route. I didn't want to click that link. I mean, you just you get cautious about this stuff. And so I said, okay, I'll take it. Can you create the invoice on my account? And all of a sudden the invoice appeared on my account. And so I picked up this book. So, you know, let's check this one out because I felt like this was a really, really good price, especially given what other uh, the same book in other grades, as well as this same grade have been going for. And uh, yeah, I just, I felt like that was, it was an interesting opportunity and I, I had the money available to just say, yeah, I'll do it. And so it worked out pretty well because I felt like I got a really good price on this book. Um, but let's get this one out of here. There we go. And uh, just actually a copy of this one back on the wall behind me. This copy isn't quite as nice as that one, but uh, the one behind me is a UK variant. This one is actually a standard sense copy. And this is Amazing Spider-Man number four in a 5-0, first appearance of Sandman. And there's actually an issue with this slab. Uh, so I'm gonna go check something real quick and I'll be right back. A few moments later. All right, so we're back. So the thing that I wanted to check was that uh, there is a huge crack in this slab. And I just wanted to go make sure that, that I hadn't been in the email or anything like that. I also checked the pictures from the listing and it wasn't cracked in that. So this definitely happened during shipping. And I feel like, I mean, generally, Heritage does a very good job of shipping. I'm always real happy with the shipping. But this one, I feel like they shipped this one in just too small of a box. This is a... 10 by 14 by two. I, I mean, I think it's just a little too small and you can see this is that corner where it would have been. And it just like, I think something pushed it in and ended up cracking this case. Now, the thing is, this isn't a big deal to me. So I've had cases get damaged before. Uh, either they were, usually most of the time they're damaged before and they just shipped them damaged. Sometimes they've caught it and they let me know. Other times they've shipped them and then I reach out and it always works out well. Heritage usually gives two options. They'll either send money to cover the reslabbing if I wanna do it myself, or they'll send a label and I can ship it back to them and they'll handle all of it on their end and then they'll ship it back to me. Uh, so 
I mean, if I do it myself, it's probably a little bit quicker than going through the process of, of through them, but you can go either way to, to have it done. But still, regardless, this is a really cool book. This is Amazing Spider-Man number four, first appearance of Sandman, probably the fifth appearance of Spider-Man. He jumps around early on. There's that Strange Tales annual two appearance, and I don't know if that one's before or after this appearance. Um, but but yeah, I mean, it's, it's that cover. It's a great book. It's just got this, uh, you know, this crack slab. So we'll get that all taken care of. Now, when it comes to the pricing on why I was saying like, this is one of those opportunities where it's good to have some money set aside so you can take advantage of that. Uh, this I ended up getting for my bid was 1200. So it's actually a thousand plus the 200 buyer's premium. If you're not familiar with how heritage works, you have a bid, but your bid doesn't actually really matter. It's your bid plus the buyer's premium. That's the total price that you're paying. Uh, but uh, so it's 1200 plus like after taxes and shipping, it was like 1300 and the latest sales for this book and this grade, it's like $2,000. It's like a 1900 to $2,000 book right now. So being able to, you know, grab a copy for about 1300 bucks, uh, was a great deal. Even if I have to deal with a little bit of a, a hassle here, this isn't something where I would be like, Oh, I want to, you know, return it or anything. I mean, it's still amazing. Spider-Man number four. It doesn't matter if the, <laughs> the case is cracked or not. I mean, it matters like in terms of the value because some people obviously won't want the book in a case that's cracked. So that's why I'll get it re-slapped, but it is still the book itself. It's still amazing. Spider-Man number four, but yeah, really cool book. Happy with it. Regardless of, of this, you know, a very nice presenting copy, really nice colors on this one. You can see I've got that one up there. That one is a 6.5, but it's a Pence copy. This one 5.0, and this is a, you know, normal sense copy. But so yeah, this is the, the first book that I picked up and, and why I said that it's good to have, you know, some money ready in case one of those, you know, good deals comes around because that's a perfect example of that where that was just a great price. You know, and it's good to be cautious as well. Like I said, I was a little bit skeptical when I got that email. I didn't know if it was real or not, but definitely was. And so, uh, yeah, very happy about that. Now, Let's check out what's in here. There are two books in this one. There should be one graded book and one raw book. And so two actually pretty, let's see. I'd say they're both pretty rare books. Uh, one rare, especially because of the grade that it's in. And another one rare because of uh, the fact that it's just not very common. And it's related to a book that I have shown very recently. Oh yeah, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll show the graded copy first. So the graded book is Pep Comics number 37. It's a 6.5, it is a slightly brittle page copy, uh, which is also why it looks so fantastic because the highest grade you can get with slightly brittle pages is a 6.5. And this is a, and I'll get this out of the bag because the bag's a little torn up so you can see a little better. So this is a Japanese World War II cover. You know, it's from 1943. Uh, Archie was also part of the lineup at this time. His first appearance was in Pep Comics number 22, and he continued on for a long time. I mean, throughout the Pep Comics run after that. But, uh, but yeah, this one has the shield on the front right here, and you've got the, uh, the firing range and the Japanese soldiers in World War II and a 6.5, which is an incredible grade for this book. I mean, Pep Comics are tough to get in decent condition. They are usually 2.0s, 3.0s, 0.5s, 1.0s, you know, that kind of thing. Getting one in a 6.5 is not easy. And so very happy with, with this pickup, you know, Pep Comics. Number 37, 6.5. Now the other book is also from the Pep Comics run. Now this one is a 0.5 and it's because I believe this one is missing the centerfold, but this is Pep comics number 24. Now, uh, what this, this one <laughs> has some interesting stuff on it. It is also a Japanese World War II cover. You've got this character down here. It's called the Hangman, which is just a crazy character. He basically goes around hanging people, like literally hanging them. That's, that's how he, he takes care of them. He's, he's often got like a gallows that's, you know, around with him and that kind of thing. Um, but like I said earlier, the first appearance of Archie is Pep Comics number 22. This is something I talked about in the last video. The second appearance of Archie is Pep Comics 23. The third appearance is Jackpot number four. 
then I believe that would make this the fourth appearance. I don't think that there would be something else between there. So I believe this is the fourth appearance of Archie in Pep Comics number 24. And because you know, this is the nice thing about these being lower grade, like I said, this is a 0.5. So I don't really mind handling it. So I'm gonna flip through real quick and find that, uh, yeah, I already found it. All right. So here's the, uh, here's the Archie story. So here's that, uh, the first couple pages of that Archie story that is in Pep Comics number 24. So like I said, these, these Pep Comics, they're really interesting because you've got some really violent stories that are in here. Often the, I mean, yeah, here, here's the, here's the hangman. And then he's got his, you know, the, the gallows <laughs> back there. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in this story, he is hanging someone. A few moments later. Oh, and actually, <laughs> the funny thing in this one, he doesn't hang anyone. He's actually the one that they that they try to hang. I mean, so it's just like you have these stories that have pretty extreme violent content. I in the last one I showed there was some there was some guy that was killed that was bloody on the ground. I mean, and then right after that you have, you know, the the Archie story where they're playing dodgeball or you know something like that. I mean, it's just. It's such an odd mix of, of stories and everything that are in these. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's really interesting to me. But yeah, so Pep Comics number 24, pretty cool cover. You know, it has really, you know, really bright colors and everything. I mean, you saw it was like I could flip through it real easily. So page quality is decent. But yeah, this one is missing the centerfold, so it is incomplete. So it would be a 0.5, but still probably, I think, the fourth appearance of Archie. So still a, a pretty big deal for this book. All right, so now let's get into this gigantic box here that, like I said, has five books in it, I think. Maybe it has six. Oh, it has six books in it. Uh, because one of the, it has five purchases in it. One of the purchases was actually a, a lot that had two graded books. So there's actually six books in this thing. I would not be surprised if they double box this. That's what they often do. Um, but, uh, yep. So I just gotta, just give me a moment. I'm going to get into this and try to not get packing peanuts everywhere. Two thousand years later. All right. We got everything out. There are six slabs in here. I'm going to start with the two that were part of a lot. So these are actually two pre-code horror books, two EC books. And I mean, this one, yeah, first one looks really nice. This is Vault of Horror number 28. This is a Johnny Craig cover. This one is actually Brittle Pages, and the highest grade you can get with Brittle Pages is a 3.5. And so that's why this book, again, presents very, very well for the grade because you can't actually get above this grade with a Brittle Page designation. So you can get a really, really nice presenting copy that isn't going to cost nearly as much. See, back cover still looks really nice. I'm guessing there's maybe some brittleness along the spine, something like that. You can tell they probably didn't want to risk pressing it. Um, and if it's brittle pages, it doesn't even matter. It's got the highest grade that it can get. But yeah, really stunning 3.5 because of the page quality. So that's the first one. Then the other one that was part of that lot was, and this is actually the bigger book of the two. This is Vault of Horror number 26. Also a 3.5, also a Johnny Craig cover. Just really cool, like, zombie hands coming up out of the ground. This is used a few times in the Vault of... Or in the EC runs. It's also used in one of the Chamber of Chills, I think, issues uh, by Harvey. And so there are... You know, it's just... It's a kind of like a trope that's used a number of times. But really cool cover. 1952. And, yeah, 3.5. This one's off-white to white pages. So this one is actually pretty nice page quality. And, and yeah, this one, I don't know, this one would be tempting, maybe, maybe a resubmission. I mean, there's definitely, there's like a little bit of staining going on in the back, so that's probably going to hold it back. It doesn't look like it's been pressed, or not well. I, I mean, I'll show you what I mean, like, look at that. All kinds of, like, indentations and everything all over this cover. I'll have to check the values on this one to see if it's worthwhile to maybe try for like a four. Like if it gets a four, is it worth the cost? Is it gets if it gets a four point five, is it worth the cost? Because this is a really really nice presenting three point five. Um, it's got this crease up up here, 
um, but otherwise very nice presented copy of that book so yeah very happy with that one so i always like ones where i have the opportunity maybe to try to you know get a better grade out of it and the next one this one <laughs> I just traded away my uh, higher grade copy of this book and I have another one. I have a 1.8 as well. And now I have a 1.5. This is Startling Terror Tales number 11. This is this classic LB Cole spider skull cover. This is basically a reuse of a character that he used in Suspense Comics number eight. And it's just a much more violent version of that character. And this one is a slightly brittle page copy, but it presents very well it does have i mean it's the grade it is like it's got a fair amount of splitting down here um but i mean you can really tell like this is a nice presenting 1.5 um, the back cover has you know a little bit of paper loss down in the corner there there's a cool little date stamp uh, up here and it's got that the leopard print you know <laughs> seat covers uh but yeah 1.5 very solid presenting 1.5. I always like getting nice presenting lower grade copies because this book is so expensive that, you know, having a lower grade copy gets makes it so that's something that's a little bit more affordable if, you know, somebody wants that book. All right, then next one. Let's see what order I want to do these in. Yeah, I'll save the conserved book for last. Um, this one, I've never owned a copy of this book. It's got a bunch of really cool stuff in this auction. Remember, this, I was really happy when I with this auction, how everything went. Uh, this is Superman number 26. So this is a one of the few Superman World War II covers. There aren't a lot where he's actually uh, fighting on the cover. A lot more of the covers are, you know, kind of a little more campy. Uh, this is Goebbels that's on the cover there. He is often on the cover with like Hitler and Mussolini and, and that kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, getting beaten up either by the Human Torch or Superman or Batman. Yeah, something like that. But that cover looks really nice that is wow i wasn't expecting that that just pops yeah that cover looks really really bright you know they're selling bb guns like usual and uh just a great presenting 3.5 of superman number 26. all right got another lb cole book here so this one is a very nice presenting copy and there's a reason why there's a specific flaw that's on here that really will hold back the grade. You just can't get above really certain grades with this flaw. This is Blue Bolt number 114. This is another classic LB Cole cover. This is underwater zombie cover. This one, when you start looking at it, there's a lot of like great details on this one. You've got this shark that's swimming by in the background. You have these like almost like piranha like fish with giant teeth. You've got this other zombie on the bottom that's buried there. I mean, there's just so much detail going on on this one. Now, this one is a 3.0, uh, 3 but it presents very well. And the reason for that is that there are three hole punches in this copy. One, two, and three. Now, the highest grade that I think I've seen with three hole punches is a 3.5. That was uh, Comics with Bonix used to have a Fantastic Four number five. That was just, thing looked like an eight, but it got a 3.5 because it had those, those hole punches. So I believe that's probably the upper limit is a 3.5. But yeah, this is a great presenting 3.0, and it's because of those hole punches, which for the most part, they really aren't even that noticeable because they're in kind of this darker area on the spine there. And uh, yeah, so a very, very nice presenting 3.0 of Blue Bolt number 114, classic LB Cole cover. So yeah, just happy to pick that one up. Now, let's talk about this conserved book. So this is a really cool book. I was very happy to be able to pick this book up. Uh, just, it's not gonna be a keeper book for me, but just to be able to have a copy of this one at some point, because it is a very tough book to find. Now this is a Lufine cover, and I know I'll get some hate out there about this, but I, I am not a big Lufine fan. A lot of his covers I don't like. This one, this one is, is pretty good. I, I, do, I do generally like this cover, you know, so I have some exceptions to that, but a lot of time I, I don't like Lou Fine's covers. But what this is, is Science Comics number one. So this is a 3.5 and you can see up there, it says conserved and the conservation notes are leaf casting to cover, interior reinforced, cover cleaned and staples replaced. Now, the big thing that you can see that was done to this was this leaf casting. 
So leaf casting is where they basically add paper and it bonds effectively to the cover. Now it can be removed, there are ways to remove it so it's not a permanent bond, but it effectively stabilizes the book. It makes it so that it's not going to you know, fall apart as easily and be as fragile. And you can see there are a number of places that it, that it filled in. So it filled in, you know, the obvious stuff is on the side here, uh, but it also filled in down here and it looks like some on the back as well and kind of along the spine. Now, the colors and everything on this copy still look fantastic. I mean, this is an incredible presenting copy of this book. The thing with Conserve though, it's always confusing to me, is that if you go to the CGC website, it says that Conserved has to follow some very specific rules. Because what conservation is, is conservation is restoration. It is just a very specific type of restoration. So if you go to CGC site, they have the rules for the different types of restoration. And if you go and read the rules for conservation, it says it has to be A1. And then it gives you very specific types of A1 that it can be. You can't have color touch. Uh, so that that's an example where you can't have color touch where you're making it look like it's complete. But what A1 means is A is professional and one means that there is a very, very small amount. And so that small amount is like a few spine ticks. Like if you have color touch and it's like a C1, it's supposed to be a very small amount, like whether it's a thin line or, or whatever it is. I, I mean, this is a lot of leaf casting. <laughs> so so I, I don't know, I don't fully understand the rules on the leaf casting because maybe it's because they don't consider it, you know, you're, that you're adding it. But like this, if this was not leaf casted and this was like added on, this would probably be an A5, maybe an A4. Like this, uh, this volume, because a five is two inches by two inches of work that was done. And so that's, this probably adds up to two inches by two inches, which to me is an A5. So I don't fully understand how you can get this label when you aren't following the rules that are that are set on the site. That, that's just something I don't fully understand. Um, now, so somebody, you know, I know there are people that are more experienced in the areas of conservation, that kind of thing. You know, somebody can maybe give me an explanation on that because to me, this is more than a one level. This is definitely a four or five level. So I don't fully understand why this can get a conserved grade. But regardless of that, this is a super cool book. <laughs> this is a very rare book. I think it's the only conserved copy that's out there. Um, I don't remember offhand how many total copies there are on the census. It's probably around like 30 or something. Um, I'll put the number here for the exact number, but it is a very low census count book. It is a rare book. So having it in a conserved grade, a restored grade, a universal grade, anything is extremely difficult. And uh, this is a pretty cool one to have. And I mean, yeah, the colors are just, they pop on this copy. This is a amazing presenting copy. 3.5 conserved, super cool to have. So if you enjoyed this video, if you thought it was useful, saw something interesting with, you know, maybe like, like with these conserved books, like I said, if you've got a comment, you can tell me why this doesn't count towards that, you know, the volume of restoration that's being done on the book. I would appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to see more of my videos, I got more videos over here. I've got the subscription button right here, and I will see you in the next video.